The Miami Dolphins are reportedly hosting a number of free agent pass rushers today in their search for a replacement for Shaq Barrett. We're getting into that here today on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. You are Locked on Dolphins, your daily Miami Dolphins podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Miami, welcome to another episode of Locked on Dolphins. It's your team every day here on the Locked on Network. I'm your host, Kyle Krabs, a lifelong Miami Dolphins fan, host of Locked on Dolphins, co-host of Locked on NFL Scouting. You can find our shows on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Tip of the cap to our every dares because it is your team every day. We don't just say it. We live it here on the Locked On Network. Today's episode of Locked On Dolphins is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked On NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions. Do apply. We are off and running this week. Uh... There's already some news in the uh, NFL cycle uh, as far as free agent visits in Miami. Jordan Love not practicing until his contract's done with the Packers. There's, a horse, of course, a whole subplot attached there as far as what is going to happen with Tua Tonga Valoa. That's not the focus today, or at least right now. But we'll see what other news comes out throughout the course of the day today. But um, the big news is the piggyback off of the show that we did yesterday, which was an unscheduled show because we had an unscheduled retirement for the Dolphins at a critical position for this team based off of injuries last season and the operations of the defense. Shaq Barrett announced his retirement on social media uh, over the course of the weekend, and it kind of left the Dolphins high and dry. They um, have a lot of youth. They still have Calais Campbell. They have two draft picks. They have star players that are coming back off of injuries in 2023. And what we said yesterday when we did the show kind of discussing the retirement to Shaq Barrett was what the Dolphins choose to do in the next 72 hours is going to be very illuminating as far as what their plan ultimately is and where they stand on the uh, players coming back from injuries and how much of a share they want to spread amongst these two rookie players. Well, message received loud and clear. <laughs> and that's the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, Drew Rosenhaus, uh, courtesy of uh, some media availability, disclosed that two of his clients, one of which being Emmanuel Agba, the other one being Yannick Ngakwe, uh, two free agent pass rushers as we get to the start of training camp report dates, will be working out reportedly with the team today or, or potentially already have worked out. I mean, it's about 10 30 in the morning and um, that urgency for Miami to get established players in for a workout to make a determination of their viability as options uh, speaks to either the desire of depth or the anticipated conservative nature of the timeline of the other guys or not wanting to put too much stress and pressure on Muhammad Kamara as a day three draft pick and shop Robinson. Uh, so to, to find out that you went after two very different players and we'll weigh in on both of them as far as what they are at this stage of the game. I know we touched on Ngakwe a little bit yesterday, but we'll, we'll do a little bit of a deeper dive since we know he's in house with the Dolphins today as they try to make a determination on, on where to go. We'll foil both of those guys against Shaq Barrett a little bit. I have some good thoughts there, but this is certainly uh, to know that Miami is being proactive and they are taking the proper urgency to get another veteran player in their ranks at this position. Um, I, I think it does help you mitigate the loss of Shaq Barrett. And there's some concessions for both guys as far as um, what Shaq did as a, a more complete player. Um, but again, to, to know that Miami said, here's our landscape, here's our, our timeline for our guys coming off of injuries, uh, I, I think it is very telling that they were as assertive and as, as quick as they were. And there may be other players as well. This, this was only because Rosenhaus had 
media availability and disclosed it, that it was able to become public knowledge that Miami was effectively having workout session for veteran pass rushers. The nice thing about doing it now versus when the Dolphins had to do it last year in season is I think there are a number of names that could potentially be attractive options for a specific role. And Yanni Kangakwe, uh, of course, was in Baltimore for a stretch. He did not overlap with Anthony Weaver, uh, but he was in Baltimore for a stretch in 2020. So some of the things conceptually that uh, Anthony Weaver could be bringing from working with Wink Martindale is, is potentially uh, something they can be impressed upon or, or drawn upon from an addition there. And the Dolphins obviously very intimately know Emmanuel Agba because he's been with the team uh, since what 2019 or 2020. He was a big free agent signing. It was really good for them those first two years uh, before a triceps injury in 2022. And then just uh, Drew Rosenhaus himself said, himself said Agba was playing a little bit out of position in Fangio's defense. And that's kind of a nice transition for us to kind of get into these two guys as far as how they profile in what we're expecting from the Dolphins in 2024. So uh, the new cycle is going to come fast. Keep yourselves locked in. I'm going to do my best to keep up with it as much as possible. And, uh, of course, we have training camp for the Dolphins ramping up here in the next uh, couple of days. Report date is tomorrow. First practice and press availability uh, is Wednesday for Mike McDaniel. So it's going to be coming fast. We're going to react to it fast, and, and we're starting with these edge workouts that the Dolphins are – Presumably going to try to get somebody locked in uh, in time for reporting to training camp to be a part of the full process, and and uh, we'll go from there. So we're going to talk Yannick Ngakwe next, deep dive into him as a player. That's coming your way here on Locked on Dolphins. Stick with us. We all love sports, but this time of year can be a little challenging because the sports stop sporting the way that we want them to, but... The sports don't have to stop sporting completely, and FanDuel is here to make sure that you have sports and skin in the game anytime you wish all summer long. This summer, FanDuel is hooking all customers up with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Ngakwe. Uh, once upon a time, was a big Kyle Krabs man crush player in the 2016 NFL draft. He played his college football at the University of Maryland. Uh, he was drafted in the third round, 69th overall, by the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2016. And pretty quickly made his presence felt as a pass rusher. Now, he's not the biggest guy. That's the biggest departure, I think, from... Having Shaq Barrett is more of a dense guy, and and Emmanuel Agba being the other name that visits is there's a really fascinating contrast of of traits for these two guys. Ngakwe, known for his first step quickness and explosiveness, he's got a really good cross chop pass rush move that he has um, consistently implemented in route to having almost seventy career sacks, having over four hundred career pressures since two thousand and sixteen across almost 6,000 snaps of playing uh, offensive or defensive football. Now, he was in Chicago this past year, totaled 34 total pressures according to Pro Football Focus. That was down 10 from his 2022 season in Indianapolis, and that was down 18 from Las Vegas was the last time he put big-time numbers up uh, with 62 total pressures. It's a three-year sample size of about 140. Pressures in total on opposing quarterbacks the last three seasons. I wouldn't read too much into the downside of or the downturn in production uh, this past year in Chicago. It took a while until they traded for Montez Sweat at the midway point of the season to really get another prominent pass rusher uh, in the books there. They didn't have a lot of disruptive presence guys on the interior. So it was kind of an undermanned front that I think won't necessarily be the case if Ngakwe were to sign in Miami. But that's not my 
the, the pass rush profile, I think, is where you, you gain a little bit versus Shaq Barrett. I, I think Ngakwe can still go a little bit of a higher rate because he has the first step explosiveness versus Shaq Barrett. I think Shaq Barrett's a more complete player, so you'd be taking some concessions in your run defense. And uh, as a case in point, Ngakwe last year uh, played 166 snaps against the run and played 408 snaps against the pass. Uh, those splits aren't always so extreme, but for his career of the almost 6,000 snaps that he has taken, it's about a two to one ratio of snaps rushing the passer versus defending the run. So you kind of have to know you're going to take the good with the bad as far as defending the run with Yannick Ngakwe. And I think that's a step down from what you had in Shaq Barrett, but I think the ceilings pass rusher is higher uh, with, with with where each one of those guys respectively is. Ngakwe's a little younger, naturally had a little bit more first step dis- at his disposal as well. That's not my favorite thing about this potential fit, though. My favorite thing about this potential fit is when I reflect back on the names that were invoked. You could go check the tape on the podcast in the podcast queue, whether you're listening or watching on YouTube. When I first discussed Muhammad Kamara on this program, kind of had some shades of Yanni Ngakwe on film was, was what I had invoked when I first watched him at Colorado State and did the profile for him on Lock on Dolphins. So to have a player whose name came to mind, you certainly liked having Shaq Barrett as a really inspirational type of player to impress on Muhammad Kamara. But I think Ngakwe actually plays a little bit more stylistically and maybe not anymore at like this stage of his career as as a 29 year old pass rusher versus I think Barrett has a little bit more potential, uh, not Barrett. I think Kamara has a little bit more potential setting the edge, but as far as how they win as pass rushers, I think this is a little bit more of a one for one. And maybe that that's not as impactful for Kamara long-term because Barrett could have taught him more about hand counters and a diverse menu of hand counters. But Ngakwe, being a player that I thought had some parallels to who Muhammad Kamara can be in the NFL if he reaches his full potential, um, you get a chance to put that on the roster and upgrade the pass rush profile. It's not all bad. Um, I think this is probably the the closest one for one exchange that you can make. Although the skill sets with Barrett and Ngakwe are not completely parallel, uh, this would be the 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 downside to him. And I, I mentioned Marcus Golden as being my preferred choice yesterday. I think Marcus Golden would be a cheaper option than adding Ngakwe. But if you're going to put the premium on the pass rush and you want to have a rotational guy to play in the pass rush and you look at all these guys to play your odd front stuff that are into your guys, plus Calais Campbell with some hybrid ability and you're not as concerned as the early down stuff because you're going to go heavier fronts up front. Okay. No, there's, there's a premium on pass rushers in Gakwe played last year for $10 million in Chicago. I'd be surprised if he touched that coming off of a, uh, a little bit of an underwhelming season this past year. So I think it can get you in the same ballpark. Will they? We'll see. Now, we also have Emmanuel Agba looming in this workout and very different kind of player. We're going to talk about why. We're going to talk about why I didn't mention him yesterday when we did kind of the initial breakdown of the Shaq Barrett decision and some names that were out there that were of interest. That's next here on Locked on Dolphins. Stick with us. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. This is not just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. If you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. LinkedIn has 86% of small businesses that find a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. 
So why not you post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions do apply. So Emmanuel Agba, familiar face, had some decent pass rush burn down the stretch. Uh, I would remind you uh, that those sacks or the, the sack production he had this year, the vast majority of it from a sack production, came against the New York Jets defensive or offensive line, the Washington Commanders, and the New York Giants. So... I know he had five, five and a half sacks in 250 snaps. With a grain of salt <laughs> would be what I would say uh, in that regard. Now, Agba um, has a lot of sweat equity with the Dolphins. Now, there's kind of been a change in the nucleus of the team defensively. So some of that goes out the window a little bit. He's played a little over 550 snaps in the regular season over the course of the last two years. Uh, over that stretch of time, in 2022 and 2023 combined, he logged 34 total pressures. Uh, he is taller, longer. He's much longer than either of Shaq Barrett or Yannick Ngakwe. A uh, little bit more in the same light as Calais Campbell and his role. So the question the Dolphins have to ask themselves as they go through the workout with Agba is if you envisioned Campbell being an interior player, which is what they listed him as when they introduced him and did the press release and did, did the social media graphics and all that. Is it a better fit for you to take Agba and potentially have him in Campbell with some of the interchangeability that both of those guys have where they can line up in interior gaps? Um, is that a more attractive option than adding a speed guy off the edge? Maybe that depends on what, again, you feel the recovery window is with Jalen Phillips and, and Bradley Chubb, but... Um, I feel like he's he's not as impactful or diverse of a player as what Calais Campbell is. So that for me, that pathway for me, why he wasn't mentioned is I would love to find a replacement for uh, Shaq Barrett as compared to finding another player to play the Calais Campbell role and then that being how you kind of smooth over the snaps that you need to redistribute within your pass rush room. Now, Drew Rosenhaus said uh, there's been some level of a market in recent weeks for Agba. There's been teams that are interested. Uh, they had some offers early in the process, but they didn't. They want to find the right fit to kind of reinvigorate Agba's career. Now he's going to be 31 years old in November. Uh, so he he's not quite a late stage player, uh, but he's a, a very well established and well tenured player who also came out in the 2016 NFL draft. So there's that parallel with Ngakwe, but he's known for length. Um, he's not necessarily known for burst and bend off the edge. Uh, when he had his premier pressure seasons with Brian Flores in 2020 and 2021. A lot of that was scheming free runners with him manipulating interior gaps. And I think some of Miami's uh, simulated pressures this season can do some of that. And if you're going to have him play head up on offensive tackles or inside and put somebody else over top of him, that's the best pathway for snaps for Agba to get him back into his best role as a player. I did ultimately feel when you watch the film last year, his ability to control blocks, shell with his hands to be able to really reset the line of scrimmage, use that length to his advantage. It didn't pop with the kind of consistency that you hoped it would if he was going to be a reduced player. Now, some of that he's playing in a two-point stance up on the edge, and so you're sympathetic to that. Um, I'm sure he would not have and command the kind of financial cost that Ngakwe would. 
Uh, so that's potentially an argument for Agba as well as to say, look, we need a more short-term bridge. We'll go with the cheaper option and go from there. But if you so if you want the one for one with Shaq Barrett and what he was presumably going to be, I think you take the investment that you were going to have in Shaq Barrett and you just reallocate it to Yannick Ngakwe. If you're going to be more fluid and flexible for a short term fix, and this team's going to blitz, right? Like this team's going to pressure, this team's going to bring extra bodies and drop guys out. Um, and that uh, I think is for the concerns that exist around the pass rush, it's important to remember. Um, there there's going to be more scheme to it. This is not as going to be going to be as dependent as the Fangio scheme was last year. Oh, we're going to let the dogs off the leash. You guys go find your ways to win and win your one-on-ones. This is a, more of a schemed style pressure uh, defense that we're anticipating that they're going to bring. And that comes down to execution just as much as it does physical ability where the Fangio scheme is really relying on we we got to have dudes up front that can win and thrive in light boxes. It's a little bit of a different ballgame. So that's the argument in Agba's sake. Uh, is it frees you up to be more fluid with Calais Campbell because they can do some of the same things? Um, ultimately, I'd be surprised if they went with Agba, but the fact that they tapped him in as a familiar name uh, can't be understated, and that's why we're we're getting that add on here to this ongoing situation for the Dolphins here to kick us off this week on the show here on Monday. I'm Kyle Krabs. That's going to do it for us here on the program. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, updated snapshot of guys in the running to replace Shaq Barrett. The Dolphins taking that uh, situation very seriously, being proactive. I think that sends quite the message, and I think it's quite a good thing that they are willing to be open to different kinds of players. There may be other names aside the two that we deep dived here on the show. We'll see what news comes out of South Florida here in the coming hours and the next day or so, and we'll react to it as it comes. I'm Kyle Krabs. Keep it locked in right here on Locked on Dolphins. I appreciate you guys checking the show. Go Fins.